Hello folks, this is Sula speaking with another old re-uploaded video for League of Legends. This one continues the ongoing tournament series for the official Button Mashers team, this time in a quarterfinals match against another team named Canadian Sherpas. This video was originally recorded on August 12th, 2011. Enjoy! Hello folks, this is Sula again. You're listening to another video for League of Legends. This is taken from a tournament competition known as the Go For Law Cup number 23. This is a quarterfinal matchup between the Button Mashers and the team known as Canadian Sherpas. Down on the bottom side of the screen, in purple, we have the Button Mashers team. Cheesy Fries is playing as Cho'Gath. Chris H is playing as Poppy. Gun Crazed is playing as Nocturne. Dark Cloud is playing as Corky and Funky Butt Lover is playing as Soraka. They're matched up against a Canadian team, Canadian Sherpas, on the top side of the screen in blue. And there we have Nemesis14 playing as Misfortune, Camera playing as Brand, Maroi playing as Kog'Maw, Mr. Paradoxical playing as Amumu, and Kurtaki, Kurtoki, something like that, playing as Tarek. So here we have the starting items for both sides, and we'll get a clear as they appear from the clairvoyances coming in from both teams. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how each team decides to start. Uh, so some interesting champs appearing in this game that you don't see all that often. I noticed that Chris H is once again playing with the button matchers in this game. Appears to be a bit of a Poppy specialist. He played Poppy in the previous game and he's playing Poppy in this one as well. This is the third match that the button matchers are playing in this competition. In They had a bye in the first round, then in the second round they played a team called Blood Sisterhood and then in the third round they played a team called D-God and then this is the fourth or the third game that they're playing fourth round also the quarterfinals round anyway it looks like the button mashers are going to head into the other team's jungle into the jungle of canadian sherpa so we'll see how this turns out here a little bit interesting vampiric scepter on nocturne which is a fine starting item but usually it's not what you'd take if you're going for a level one fight so anyway here we go we may have an engage right here coming in at level one and brand over there being revealed by the clairvoyance a lot of damage coming in from that pillar i don't know if either team really has that big of an advantage for level one fight they each have a mixture of champions that are pretty good at level one and some champs that aren't that great so it looks like the button mashers are going to back off here i see them retreating their goal there was they wanted to try to take away the blue buff from Mr. Paradoxical because Amumu jungles very slowly if you can take away his blue buff at the start of the match. But it looks like they're not willing to risk a major fight at the start and it looks like they're going to back off here and just protect their own blue buff. Gun Crazed is the jungler for the button matches. Looks like he's going to start at Wolves, get some help here from Soraka and Corky, and then I'd expect he's going to go and do blue with a little bit of help from them as well. So laning matchups here, some strange laning matchups as I was alluding to a little bit earlier. Chris H looks like he's going to solo top with Poppy. So we're gonna have solo top Poppy that is pretty unusual. Meanwhile, as we see the clairvoyance coming in and Mr. Paradoxical, the Amumu player, is indeed taking his blue as expected. So solo top Poppy, you're not gonna see that very often. Uh, Chris H starting with boots and four health pots because he went back to base. Meanwhile, he's going to be up against Kog'Maw solo top. Maroi playing Kog'Maw also started boots and health pots. So very unusual starting laning matchup here. Not something you see very often. Normally you would see a Cho'Gath player top lane and then there would be some kind of uh, caster, ability power champ, some kind of caster like Brand. So here, because Poppy's in top, that means Cheesy Fries playing as Cho'Gath is going to be here mid. Cheesy Fries has started with Doran's Ring. Uh, meanwhile, Camera the Brand player has started with Boots and three health pots. Much more stand, pretty standard starting item on Brand there. The Boots and three health pots, you see that a lot. So this is going to be a, kind of a tough lane for Cho'Gath, I would think, just due to the way that this works. Anyway, and there's a clairvoyance on the Moomoo Flare, Mr. Paradoxical, clearing his jungle there. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, we're going to have Quirky against Misfortune. Pretty standard stuff there. Dark Cloud starting with a Doran's Blade. Misfortune starting with a Doran's Blade as well. And uh oh, here comes Mr. Paradoxical. Early gank coming out here. There's the brand pillar. Are they going to have enough damage to kill Cheesy Fries? And yes, they are indeed going to score first blood there. So nicely done. I think that that was partly due to the fact that Cheesy Fries just didn't have any health pots, so when he took Harass from Brand, he got very low and was enough, low enough to be bursted down when that Amumu gank came in. So not a good play there to start out, but Mash is going to be behind early on since they gave up that first blood. 
as I was saying, Dark Cloud down here in bottom lane, Dark Cloud likes to play Corky in pretty much every game that I've seen. He, whenever they, he's able to take them, he, it, whenever he's able to get Corky, he usually plays it. So starting with Doran's Blade against Nemesis 14, also starting Doran's Blade. Then Soraka over here, Funky Butt Lover playing Soraka, likes to start Doran's Ring. I've seen that before uh, in other games as well. So likes to start with Doran's Ring. Up against a Tarek player, Kurtaki, uh, who has boots, a health pot, and a ward. Pretty standard support stuff as well, although he doesn't have a fairy charm, so no mana regen there for him. Anyway, here the members of the Button Mashers are kind of been forced back in their lane. I see Chris H and Cheesy Fries both kind of hugging their tower. And look at this. Looks like they might be doing a lane swap. Maroi is coming down here to mid, the Kogma player. That means Brand is probably going top. And these matchups are kind of are, are a bit dangerous for the Button Mashers. Anyway, Gun Crazed is jungle invading over here. Let's see if this turns into, if he's able to find anyone over here. He's looking for that Amumu player, hasn't been able to find him here. So yeah, Bran going to be in top lane. That's going to be awful tough for the Poppy player to lane against Bran. So we'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, Cheesy Fries against Maroi here. It does make sense with the way that Kog'Maw's skills work. It does percentage-based damage, so it won't matter how tanky Cheesy Fries is if he's up against Kog'Maw, if Kog'Maw starts to get fed. Kog'Maw, a champ you don't see that much in competitive play. Well, we'll get back to that in a minute because it looks like Gun Crazed is going to try for a kill here in bottom lane. Let's see, it doesn't look like the Canadian surplus players down here know that he's here. So here comes the engage right here, going in on Nemesis. There's the, the Valkyrie coming in, exhaust on Nemesis, exhaust going in on both sides. Now they're switching focus to, to the Tarek player, Kurtzaki, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get a kill out of that. So a nice setup, but not able to get the kill there on the part of the Button Mashers. And that's a shame because that would have helped them out a lot. But at least they do have the minion wave pushback here. It's going to make them a lot safer for the immediate future. As I was saying before, uh, about Kog'Maw, oh, here we go, another gank in mid, Mr. Paradoxical coming out, Amumu does have red buff, so this is kind of dangerous, but he doesn't have flash because he used it in that last fight. Anyway, Paradoxical still chasing after Cheesy Fries, and now he's chased into a bit of a dangerous spot, Guncray's going to come counter gank that, but it looks like he'll be able to slip out without too much trouble. Yeah, the Amumu player... Uh, Mr. Paradoxical used his flash in the previous kill of Cheesy Fries, so he didn't have it up for that little engage there. Might have been able to go for it otherwise. As I was trying to say before, Kog'Maw, you don't see him that much. It's not so much that Kog'Maw is inherently bad, it's just that he needs a ton of farm to become strong. He's a really good late game champion if he gets a ton of farm, but he's pretty weak in the laning phase. He does better if he's in a support lane. You don't really want to solo that much with Kog'Maw. But up against Cho'Gath, this is a lane that Kog'Maw can probably do. I, I just generally like these laning matchups a lot more for Canadian Sherpas than for the Button Mashers, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Right now, Chris H is camping in the brush. Gun Craze coming up here, and I guess, does Camera have this worded? I don't know. It looks like if Chris H is just waiting to try to charge him into the wall, but it looks like this might be worded because Camera is backing off. Oh, up here, Paradoxical coming in from behind the tower. This is a super aggressive dive. Cheesy Fries is going to flash out, and looks like he's going... Oh, there's a flash coming after. Cheesy Fries is going to get picked off there, but is Maroi going to be able to make it out of here now? And uh, he may be able to. Gun Craze is coming down to try to pick him off. Is he going to be able to get out there? There is the flash. Can Gun Craze chase him down? Gun Craze, no, going to be slowed by Kog'Maw there, and it looks like Maroi is going to make it out. So 2-0 in favor of Canadian Sherpas here. A very aggressive dive, but able to get away with it. So very nicely done on the part of the Sherpas there. All right, so the Button Mashers are in trouble here in the early going. Cheesy Fries is not doing all that well in his lane. Let's see, he's behind Maroi, he's behind Brand. So 31, not behind by that much, but the two kills does hurt, definitely. Chris H still has not been back to base. Camera has gone back once. He's picked up a Doran's Ring. Here in top lane, Chris H has 27 minion kills, and uh, Brand has 42. So he's pretty far behind in this lane, as you'd expect. It's not a particularly good laning matchup for them. Let's see what's going on in bottom lane here. I'm going to make sure there's not a kill while I'm looking at this. Dark Cloud, 61 minion kills. Nemesis, 38. Okay, so this is the one bright spot for the Butt Mashers. They are winning bottom lane very decisively. Quirky Soraka is crushing that bottom lane. And right now they're going back to buy. So Button Mashers losing top, losing mid, but they're winning bottom right now. So that means that a it's a relatively even game. Although the two, the fact that the other team, Canadian Chirpus, has both kills doesn't bode all that well. Anyway, I saw both Funky Butt Lover and Dark Cloud went back to buy. They went back to buy at the same time, which is what you generally want to see with an, when you have AD carry, attack damage carry, and support. 
Funky Butt Lover is probably building Heart of Gold, I'd assume that's why he's getting Ruby Crystal first, and Dark Cloud has picked up a Phage and Boots. Uh, only the one ward, they may be trying to make a play for Dragon relatively soon, but if I had seen a Vision Ward here, I would assume that they were planning to fight for Dragon soon, but since I didn't see that, I'm going to guess that they probably are just going to farm for the immediate future. Anyway, Cheesy Fries laning here in mid against Moroi, uh, like I said, is behind in this lane. Cheesy Fries has picked up, looks like Cheesy Fries going for Philos, Philosopher, uh, Philosopher's Stone there with the Regrowth Pendant and the Fairy Charm. Moroi oh, has gone for the Recurve Bow. Yes, you build attack speed early on on Kog'Maw since his attacks do percentage-based damage with his one skill. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. You want attack speed so you can apply that percentage-based damage more often. So that's generally how you build him. Anyway, Paradoxical here. Gun Craze knows that he's there. So let's see if they try to counter gank this or try to make a play on this Amumu player. We'll see. There is a real lack of vision down here on the part of the Wet Mashers, and indeed, there it is. There's Mr. Paradoxical, the Amumu player, trying to go for bottom lane, but uh, the fact that he was spotted by Gun Crazed, the Nocturne player, allowed them to make their escape. Saw the Tarek stun come in, but Dark Cloud was able to Valkyrie away out of it. Chris H is hugging his tower up here. He's really struggling against Bran, but now deciding to go in. Let's see how this works here. Uh, there comes the ultimate and the ignite. Bran going to try to flash away. There's flash for a flash. Is Chris H going to finish him off? Yes, going to get the kill there. And Poppy ult, nope, Poppy ult going to wear off. And it's going to be a one for one play there. So almost, almost enough to get away, but the Poppy ult looks like it wore off and that tower shot was enough to finish off Chris H. So one for one there in top lane. Uh, Overall, Chris H, 39 minion kills. Oh, right here we have a fight coming in in bottom lane. There's the Soraka wish ult, Funky Butt Lover trying to flash away, and Dark Cloud's going to get enough burst to finish off Nemesis. So, Amumu trying to gank there, but now it's going to turn into a counter gank. Gun Craze going in on Kurtoski, and right there gets the fear effect. Now switching the focus to Amumu, but Mr. Paradox going to flash away. And that's only not going to turn into another kill. But Buttmasher's able to score a kill there in bottom lane on the Misfortune player. So a big, nice play there for them just to uh, be able to score their first real kill of the match. Or, or first one that wasn't an exchange one for one. So a nice play there. I think that Dark Cloud just had more burst than the other team was expecting. Meanwhile, here in mid, Gunkrai is going to take over while TZ Fries goes back to base and gets ready to buy. And Gunkrai is going in on Moroi, doing a lot of damage here. He was just outside the tower range. I uh, don't know how much damage he actually did there, but looks like he was able to cover that lane with no problems. And Chris H going in again on camera, the brand player, but I see I saw a stun coming out, so brand able to defend himself. Poppy going for that early Trinity Force, I would assume has the sheen. Next item will probably be a phage based on that. Meanwhile, Brand has Sword Shoes, Double Dorans, and looks like he's going for a revolver based on that build, Hextech Revolver. So, building early early ability power, early sustain in lane. Anyway, here comes another gank in lane, going in on Moroi there. There's the fear effect. Can they finish this off? Oh, flashing out right before he got hit by the terror from Nocturne. So, a nice play on the part of Moroi to escape that. Looked like it was going to be a kill, but able to escape. Gun Crazed was able to get that flash down, though. Meanwhile, it looks like Dark Cloud has gone back to buy again, picked up Berserker Greaves and a second Durance Blade, and Funky Butt Lover has picked up a Heart of Gold. Notice here's the Vision Ward, so that tells me Button Mashers are getting ready to go for Dragon in the next few minutes. He's going to toss down that Vision Ward and remove any wards that Canadian Sherpas have at Dragon. So that's going to be their next play here. Meanwhile, another kill coming in here. Are they going to be able to finish off Moray? Oh, he's on one hit, and there they go. Are going to get that kill on Kog'Maw. So Gun is sticking around mid, wanting that kill, wanting to help out his solo laner, and was able to get that there. So this is now a very good time to make a play for Dragon, and we'll see if they go for it here. Uh, meanwhile, down there, Dark Cloud getting stunned by Tarek. But uh, oh, right there, Tarek heal coming in on Nemesis. Dark Cloud taking a lot of harass, but there's the Soraka heal. Oh, it looks like the Soraka heal came in while the impure shots from Misfortune were still on Dark Cloud. So he only got half the benefit. But here comes Gun Craze going in on Nemesis right here. Nemesis, does, oh, there's the flash, but it's not enough. Flashing and still going to be finished off by Nocturne ult right there. It looked like each side was sort of waiting for the other to use their skill. Nemesis waiting for that Nocturne ult to come out. Gun crazed, waiting for the flash to appear, and the button mashers were able to clear up that kill nonetheless. So now they're going to make their play for Dragon. They've got the vision ward there. Nice ward placement here in the triangle brush, giving button mashers vision on someone trying to come in. But 
With Misfortune dead, they, the other team, Canadian Trippers, really doesn't have the damage to come in and try to steal this. So there they go. Going to take it with that Cho'Gath Beast. And first dragon of the match going to the Button Mashers. So after a rough start here, the Button Mashers have really started to turn this around and get back into positive numbers here. Although this top matchup is still not going that well. Looks like Camera is still beating up Chris H up here. Just because Brand is a lot stronger than Poppy in lane. This is a really unfavorable laning matchup. Yeah, Chris H being zoned completely out of this. They're going to need to get a jungler up there to help out. Brand, 93 minion kills. Chris H, 46 minion kills. So uh, Poppy is really just getting killed in that top lane. And this shows you why Poppy usually does not take a solo lane. So losing top very badly at this point in time. Uh, Cheesy Fries looks like he's going to come up here and try to cover this lane. They're going to try to do another lane swap, I think. Meanwhile, in middle lane, Cheesy Fries on 83 minion kills and Moroi the Cogma player on 76. So that spin has evened itself out pretty much even there. But Buttmasher is getting losing top badly, winning top or winning bottom uh, by a large degree. So, uh, like I said, mid relatively even. Canadian Sherpa's winning top, Button Mashers winning bottom, but Button Mashers have taken the first dragon, which is pretty nice. And now Moroi has shifted down here, so it looks like they're going to put Misfortune in the solo lane. This is really interesting. We've seen a lot of lane swaps in this match. Anyway, Dark Cloud, uh, Dark Cloud has the most farm in the game, 120. The Misfortune player Nemesis on 80, also Misfortune 02, while Dark Cloud is 101. So that matchup's going quite well. And here, Camera has face checked a bush where Gun Crazed was sitting. He's going to have to flash out, so had to use up his flash there. Uh, just walked into the brush where Gun Crazed was already sitting, and that was a bit of a mistake there. Anyway, Nemesis should be able to farm here in mid, I would think. He can't really hurt Cheesy Fries, though. Cheesy Fries is going to be too tanky. Uh, all he has is Philostone and Heart of Gold, so I guess he actually isn't that tanky in terms of armor and magic resist yet, but he does have a lot of health just due to all those feast stacks. Anyway, a bit of an engagement coming in here on the river. Let's see, people moving around in this area, but no actual fights. Meanwhile, there's a battle coming on down in bottom lane. Punky Butler taking a lot of damage, but meanwhile, Dark Cloud is attacking Moroi, and Moroi is getting very low here. Soraka still does have that wish ultimate. There's the Valkyrie after Moroi, and that's going to finish it off right there. Trying to stun Dark Cloud so he gets hit by the Cogma explosion, which he does, but it's not going to be enough. Where is that Nocturnal coming? Up in top lane, uh, Chris H diving in top lane with Poppy ult. Gun Craze going in too, but it doesn't look like they were able to finish off camera. He's on one hit though. There's the charge into the wall. Can Chris make it out here? And yes, yes he has. But now he's going to have to retreat on very low health. Looks like he's going to be able to though. So securing that dive in top lane using that Poppy ult, Demacian Justice, or D Diplomatic Immunity, or whatever it's called. I think it's Diplomatic Immunity. Um, the one that allows Poppy to go invulnerable to all except one champion's damage. So, a nice job, and the Button Rush is really starting to flip this game around. Like I said, they, it, well, they were 0-2 in kills at the start, but now they're already up to 6-3, and they have, are just really starting to seize control. Dark Cloud is just winning this bottom lane so decisively. Look at this Soraka harass there on Tarek, dancing in and out of tower range. Anyway, Paradoxical missing the bandage toss there. Funky Butt Lover is in some trouble though. There comes the Tarek stun, and there's the Amumu ultimate. Funky Butt Lover, does he have his flash up? Yes, he should be able to flash out of this, and indeed, there it is. Does not have Wish ultimate. There's another bandage toss. More damage coming in on Funky Butt Lover. Oh, so that's Soraka heal, 300 health back, right when it looked like he was about to die. So, just so much heal on the part of Soraka, able to survive there in lane when it really looked like Soraka was going to die. I think the Kog'Maw living artillery was in the air above Funky Butt Lover's head when he popped another heal on himself and was able to survive. So a nice escape there. Three-man gank in bottom, but not enough to get the kill. And uh, both sides used a lot of summoners, a lot of cooldowns there in that fight. Anyway, Gun Crazed is now looking to counter gank that, but he's been spotted by Tarek, and that stun, his little dazzle projectile, is going to be enough to rescue the situation there. Anyway, Cheesy Fries did a huge dive after the Misfortune player, so it looks like Nemesis almost died there, but not quite. Meanwhile, Chris H going in, engaging with Brand in top lane. Let's keep an eye on this fight here. Uh, that Brand taking a, 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 presumably a lot of damage. Again, it would be nice if we could actually see the health bars here, but uh, unfortunately can't. All right, that looks like that engagement broke off. Cheesy Fries and Gun Craze pushing this mid tower. They probably should be able to get it here with the damage that Nocturne puts out. And indeed, there it goes. So first tower of the game going to go down and go down on the side of the Button Masher. So nicely done, nicely done there. Another nice team play. I will say that Gun Crazed 
is has does has done a nice job both in this game and some of the previous ones in this series that I've seen of just be making his presence known all over the map. He's been able to get into a lot of fights, help out his teammates, which is what you, you want your jungler to do. You don't want a jungler who just sits in the jungle and passively farms. That's really not what you want. You want the jungler to make their presence felt, be uh, present in all different lanes all over the map. Anyway, there is another vision ward going down at Dragon. Looks like the button mashers are getting ready for another Dragon fight in a few minutes. So, gonna toss down the vision ward and kill the ward that Canadian Sherpas had there. So, a nice play there. Funky Butt Lover has finished Heart of Gold and Lucky Pick, so he has two gold for five items. Oh, Dark Cloud was trying to recall there and is in a bit of trouble, but gonna Valkyrie over the wall before the Tarek stun can do much of anything. So, Corky, a nice counter to Tarek in bottom lane with his Valkyrie, makes it hard to do much of anything with the Tarek stun. Another champion that I've heard mentioned who actually does well against Tarek in bottom lane is actually Sivir, just because whenever that Tarek stun comes out, you can pop on your spell shield, and then it just doesn't do anything. Morgana also not bad as a support against Tarek as well. So anyway, Tarek very strong in lane, but there are a couple of champs that can counter him. Corky does a nice job just because you Valkyrie backwards when it happens. Anyway, engagement coming in here. There's Chris H popping that ultimate again. Brandalt going in, doing a lot of damage. Oh, is, is Chris going to be finished off by this ignite? Yes, yes he is. So one for one there in top lane. So a nice play on the part of Camera, the brand player, to turn that into a one for one when he was Nocturne ganked. Anyway, down here, another fight coming in. Exhaust for exhaust on both sides, going in on Maroi, and he's gonna get finished off there by Cheesy Fries. Looks like a feast came in, and that was a nice job. Just three-man gank. Remember, the other team, Canadian Sherpas, did not have vision because they killed the ward here earlier because of the vision ward that the Soraka player, Funky Butt Lover, put down. And at this point, uh, Butt Mashers will probably go after that dragon pretty soon. The one weakness is their jungler's top lane, but guess what? Canadian Sherpas jungle, jungler is also in top lane, so that means both teams will have trouble going for that dragon. Anyway, Gun Crazed, I would expect, would start to head towards Dragon soon so they can make a play for it, but at the moment, looks like he wants to try to steal this blue. He can really shut down the jungling of Mr. Paradoxical if he can steal this. And right now, looks like they're going to have a fight back and forth here. So there's the fear effect coming in. Who will actually get this blue buff? Can Gun Crazed successfully steal it away? I don't think he's going to be able to. Too many members from the other team. But and now Chris H and Cheesy Fry is coming in here as well. Looks like we're going to have a fight for this blue buff. Again, fight continuing to go on. Three members of the Button Mashers here. And there's the Engage going in on camera, the brand player. He's been feared there, and now here comes Cho'Gath. Are they going to be able to finish off this kill? Um, yes, indeed they are. So uh, three people at blue. Now here comes the rest of Canadian Sherpas in, and the fight for the blue buff continues to rage on both sides. Uh, who are they going to try to get this? They probably want this on Cho'Gath, I would think, out of these three. Not terrible on Poppy either. Nope, just going to use the smite to take it. They really wanted to deny that to Mr. Paradoxical more than anything else, or Brand as well. Didn't want uh, Camera the Brand player to get it. Anyway, here comes the Nocturne all going in on Maroi. This is a, an aggressive engage here. Gun Cray is taking a lot of damage that I don't know if that was necessarily the best use of Nocturne all, but perhaps he didn't realize that Nemesis was there. Anyway, mean, in the meantime, Dark Cloud and Funky Butt Lover do Doing the dragon, picking this one up, shouldn't have any real trouble. Oh, Gun Grace spell shielded that Tarek stun there uh, with his W. So nice play there. So Button Mashers have controlled the second dragon of the match. They're now ahead 9 to 4 in kills in terms of farm. Their solos are in pretty good shape. Dark Cloud and Cheesy Fries. Chris H is pretty under farm though. So two of their three solos are in good shape. Chris H under farm though. And they have also taken all three of the initial towers. So 3-0 in towers, pretty significant. That's a major early game edge there. Dark Cloud and Cheesy Fries pushing on this tower too, getting in a lot of damage on it. Wish I knew quite how much they got. I would guess that they got about half of that tower at rough guess. Gun Crazed up here taking red. Pretty standard stuff. So, in a very comfortable position at this point in time, uh, ahead in kills, ahead 2-0 to zero in dragons, ahead 3-0 to zero in towers so far. So in a strong position at this point in time, and Dark Cloud is really in a position just to carry this game from this point. He's already 202, has his Trinity, has Trinity Force, Berserker Greaves, Double Dorans, all at the 22 minute mark. Oh, and he has a Vampiric Scepter too, just for a little bit of extra sustain off of Lifesteal. Right here, I'm guessing they're going to put this on Cheesy Fries. The, the big, biggest issue for the Button Mash is they don't really have a traditional caster on their team. They don't really have that much magic damage. They have, I mean, they have some, but... The other team can mostly build armor against their team because they don't have that much magic damage. All right, anyway, just to, let's see if we can wrap up. Look at the other other players' items. Oh, interesting. Wit's End. Early Wit's End on Cho'Gath. You don't see Wit's End as an item on Cho'Gath that much, but I guess because he's been leaning against 
uh, casters the whole game, he thinks that that would be a useful item to pick up. Trinity Force on Poppy, so that means that Chris H is now very strong. He also went for Dodge Boots, which is a, a, a bit of an interesting choice. I, it, I think it is defensible. Anyway, Gang coming in here in mid there, or in top lane, excuse me. Gun Crazed using Nocturne Alt, forcing the flash from Brand, so a nice escape on the part of Camera, but did get that flash down. Fuggy Butt Lover is trying to clear a ward in this brush, has the Oracle now, but needs protection there. Anyway, the rest of the team is going for this Baron. They're, I don't know if they're going to actually do Baron, but they're going to at least force the Baron fight, and I'm not sure if Canadian Sherpas are reacting fast enough. Baron's already halfway dead. Let's see if they're going to be able to get there in time. No, they're reacting pretty slowly to this. I think Buttmasters are going to have this done by the time they get there, and yes, they did, so that is a major, major error on the part of Canadian Sherpas. They gave away that Baron almost for free, and now Tarek is getting engaged upon by the whole team running his ult but I don't think it's going to be enough and right there yes he is going to be finished off Randall wrecking wrecking the button mashes but they're going to be able to survive Soraka wish ult coming in and healing so so much damage and now they're going to finish off Moroi as well so that's a uh, uh, oh no not excuse me not Moroi yes they did get Moroi they also got Brandon there as well so three for zero and Baron and that's game surrender vote coming in right there on the part of Canadian Sherpa so wow this game just ending in a real hurry this Canadian Sherpa gave up that Baron fought and then fought afterwards and then lost 3-0. So we're going to wrap this up right here and finish up with this match. This was really a bit of a strange game just because the laning matchups were kind of weird and people were always switching around the different lanes. But in the end, the Button Masters seized control, I guess, at about the a little after the 10 minute mark. And they never really looked back from that point on, taking the two dragons, taking the three towers that they got and then taking Baron in the end. So just a, a, an example of more team play outdoing the other team's team play than really so much the in individual excellence on the part of anyone. Anyway, the MVP for this match, Dark Cloud 403 he got really, really farmed down in bottom lane. He was far, far out in front of anyone else in terms of minion kills. And then the re you see the result of that in those fights at the end, just so, so strong for the rest of the team. I thought Gun Crazed also played very well. I mentioned during the game that he was appearing all over the map, inserting himself into all the laning matchups just just appearing everywhere, making it so that Canadian Sherpas could never really anticipate where he was going to be, and that's reflected in the six assists that he had for this game. Chris H was really under-farmed, so I'm kind of surprised that the other team was willing to give up so willingly. I mean, he only had 86 minion kills, but he was did get his Trinity Force. He was able to dive people at the end of the match. Cheesy Fries also was able to get pretty strong at the end. He had rough laning matchups, but still managed to get farmed out of it, so that was a good sign. Overall, though, the Button Mashers really were kind of behind in terms of minion kills in this game, but it was their control of the neutral buffs that made the difference. Taking those dragons, taking those towers, taking Baron, that was enough to ultimately swing things. And I should also mention Funky Butt Lover 009, that's a good Soraka game had words in the right places throughout that match. So this one ended pretty quickly. Canadian Chirp was a very solid team. My understanding is that they won one of the June go for, or June go for Law competitions. So a pretty strong team has put up good results in the past. What this means is the Button Mashers moves on to the semifinals of this tournament, the go for Law Cup number 23. So we'll have that matchup there. We'll have that matchup too, the semifinal matchup. So look for it soon. In the meantime, take care, guys. Hope you have fun, and I'll see you again soon.